Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. In today's video, we're gonna go back in time and talk about Shanks and the role he played in Marineford. Shanks is the youngest of all the Yonko, and the only one who has not yet been defeated or challenged among the original Yonko. Now, during the past, he made many difficult choices that changed the course of the world of One Piece's history, and Shakes did his utmost to prevent major conflicts from happening, but in the end, he could not avoid those conflicts even if he wanted to. During the Battle of the Best in Marineford, the moment where Shanks came out really is one of the more prominent moments where we've seen him. And overall, he was trying to stop this huge battle that he really wasn't a part of, but wanted to stop the fighting, because there were several pirates and sailors that had lost their lives during this battle. In today's video, we're going to talk about the role that Shanks played in this Marineford arc, and how Shanks' actions could have prevented this conflict from spreading even further, which would have really, of course, cost the lives of many more pirates and sailors. But before we jump into our time machine, if you're new to the channel, we'd be absolutely honored if you consider leaving us a like, or even subscribing with a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out and motivates us to make more content, and if you want to help us out in a bigger way, consider sharing the video or the channel with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So friends, even before this amazing monumental conflict happened in Marineford, where some of the greatest pirates and marine allies fought. Shanks had a feeling that something big and dangerous was coming, and he said that he felt that the scars on his left eye were hurting, so this bad feeling had something to do with Marshal D. Teach. Since Shanks knew that Teach could be involved in something dangerous, he goes to Whitebeard so that he could get Ace to come back before he went after Teach to capture him for his treachery against the Whitebeard crew. When we see Shanks visit Whitebeard's ship, he goes there alone, while just using his Conqueror's Hockey to make the weak pirates of Whitebeard's crew faint, as in to not interfere with the conversation between him and the other Yonko. During the conversation, they're both very cordial to each other, and Shanks ends up asking Whitebeard to ask Ace to return to his ship, because Teach had gathered a really strong crew to fight alongside him, and this would put Ace in trouble. Because if Ace persisted in looking and finding Teach, this would be dangerous for his life, because Teach was a dangerous man, for he was the one who was responsible for making the scar on Shanks' face at a time when Shanks himself says that he was not distracted. This means that Teach attacked Shanks directly and still managed to cause that wound on his face. Something that makes Teach very clever and agile because no other pirate could do something similar to Shanks' body. However, Whitebeard refuses, saying that he needed to teach Blackbeard something that one should never betray their crew, and much less the crew of a brother, because this was unforgivable and that he would not allow his act to go unpunished. And yet, Years later, we find out that Ace insisted on that mission to go after Teach and bring him back to Whitebeard. In response to this request from Shanks, Whitebeard ends up going on to saying that Shanks was just too young, and that he couldn't try to guide his, Whitebeard's, actions because Shanks' knowledge was that of a mere child compared to a man who had lived so many years in conflict and sorrow. After finishing a drink together, they both ended up taking their weapons and clashed, causing the clouds above to split in half. Now, we don't know if this was really meant to be a fight or just a friendly sword collision, but this conversation between them was never made public to the rest of the world. And it turns out, Shanks' prediction was correct. Ace was defeated by Teach, he was then captured and handed over to the Marines to have his life taken in a public execution. Now, of course, Whitebeard wouldn't allow one of his sons to lose his life, so he goes to Marineford to start a fight between the pirates and sailors in hopes of getting Ace out of there. Having foreseen this great confrontation, Shanks decided to go there, and in fact, he even performed some other small missions that changed the course of the overall battle in Marineford. Shanks also really had no apparent reason to participate in that conflict. Now, he knew Ace, and he knew that he was Luffy's brother, yet he didn't really have the same kind of bond that he did with our rubber lad, so, you know, he wouldn't necessarily move his crew to try and stop the fighting or make any of them lose their lives. But when it comes down to it, Shanks wouldn't have lost his life and would have ended up defeating one of the Yonkos. But instead of really getting into that conflict, he ended up going and stopping Kaido before he managed to get there. Now, many wonder if this was to prevent Luffy from eventually leaving the course that he was already kind of destined to take, which could happen should something happen to Ace, fearing that Luffy would leave the seas after losing his brother or lose his life facing Kaido or the admirals who wanted this battle. Kaido, knowing that Whitebeard was going to Marineford for this very purpose, he decides to also go there to confront him. And this event was making many people afraid, because if there was a confrontation between 
between those two particular Yonko in Marine Fort, it would have been just unimaginably devastating, and everything would have been destroyed along with any other pirates that were there and sailors and Marines in that very spot. Upon learning that Kaido was going to Marineford, Shanks and his pirates intercepted his ship and prevented him from going to Marineford, as he was trying to prevent further destruction and things really getting out of hand. In some yet as undisclosed way, Shanks was able to stop Kaido and get him to come back. Apparently no confrontation happened between the two, and Shanks may have been able to get him to change his mind in a more peaceful way. But something rather strange is that, since we've seen during this Wano arc, is that Kaido really doesn't take orders from anyone. Kaido's a very proud man, so going over anyone who tries to stand in his way is always his main way of getting things done. But we still have the question of why would he retreat without at least fighting Shanks? I mean, he's a younger Yonko, so Shanks may have somehow managed to get him to retreat or at least head back home, perhaps providing information about something important or by saying that if they faced each other, Kaido wouldn't arrive in Marineford in time. However it went down, Shanks was able to make Kaido retreat. Of course, word ended up getting back to the Marines about Kaido's attempt to go to Marineford and about Shanks' stopping him. So everyone was also afraid because of a battle between these two Yonko had happened. Again, devastation everywhere. Once Whitebeard and company arrived in Marineford, a huge battle breaks out, and we can see that we're on both sides were extremely powerful characters. And during this conflict, many lives were eventually and unfortunately taken. But of course, the character that stood out the most in this overall battle was, of course, Whitebeard. He gave gave his all to save his son Ace, no matter what the pain he had to go through, and ended up sacrificing his very life to try and avenge Ace after losing his life. But Teach, with just unbelievable timing, appears in this fight and takes Whitebeard's life, and then again somehow manages to take his earthquake fruit power. And now, it seems, he's able to use two different devil fruit powers. Something that leaves everyone really impressed by, because really it's already been said many times in the story that if one eats more more than one devil fruit, they die. So the fact that now Blackbeard can use two, simultaneously even, is really something of a curiosity. After Ace and Whitebeard lost their lives, many pirates and sailors that were still fighting were doing so without a purpose, and really, the conflict wasn't going anywhere but just bad and loss of life. So then we see Shank suddenly appear in Marineford, and just in time to save Kobe from having his life taken by Admiral Akainen. Shanks praised the young sailor for his determination and said that Kobe had secured the seconds of courage needed to change the fate of the world, with his brave words right before Akainu tried to take him, which allowed Shanks to get there and stop the battle. The rest of the Marines also noticed the presence of the other members of the Red Hair Pirates, as they wondered how Shanks managed to get to Marineford so quickly when they had received word that he had been fighting Kaido elsewhere in the world. Another thing that is also curious, and kind of begs the question, is how does Shanks move so fast through the seas? And there are just so many possibilities in this world of one Piece, but that's probably a subject for another video. So after Shanks stopped Akainu's attack, he ends up telling Buggy to give Luffy the straw hat because he had lost it in this confrontation. But to get his old friend to do this, Shanks said that he would give him a treasure map, but it ended up only being a bluff. When Lucky Roo, of course a member of Shanks' crew, asked him if he was sure he wouldn't want to hand the hat to Luffy personally after not seeing for 10 years, Shanks admits that he would very much like to, but the time wasn't right yet for the two to meet. Because you see, Luffy hadn't become strong enough yet to fulfill the promise that they had made to each other so long ago. So he would wait just a while longer so that he could go out and Luffy could grow even more and see his young friend grow into the great pirate he knew he would become. After Law manages to recover Luffy's body, who was just in an absolute terrifying state of shock after just having lost his brother, Buggy goes to Shanks and to make him keep his promise, but Shanks just comments on how it had been a while since they'd last seen each other. To put the final end in the confrontation, Shanks basically told Marco to withdraw so that the battle couldn't go any further, and so that no more lives would be lost in vain. To further discourage the fighting, Shanks said that he would offer to be the target of this fight, and if anyone was still willing to fight, to bring it on. But everybody else kind of said, no, no, we're, we're not going to take on Shanks. Another fact of the matter is, is the fact that both sides, including the Marines, had suffered many casualties after fighting only one Yonko. So if they decided to keep on fighting, Shanks could have easily leveled the place. And even the Admirals were weakened, having fought against 
Whitebeard. Considering, although we don't know the full extent of Shanks and his crew, if Shanks is any indication, we know that he and his crew would be able to destroy pretty much any sailor in that spot. And they'd still have plenty of energy left over, while pretty much the rest of everybody there, including the admirals, were exhausted and pretty much didn't have any hope of victory. Shanks even invites Teach to go to a fight, but Teach says that he would decline the offer, saying that this was not the right time to face him again in a duel. Having just gotten the power from Whitebeard, it was necessary for Blackbeard to withdraw so that he could learn to use this new power. So Teach and his crew back out of the fight and end up leaving Marineford. With that taken care of, Shanks then tells the Marines that he wanted to give Whitebeard and Ace the burials they deserve. So he would be taking their bodies to a place where they could be buried and left undisturbed. Fleet Admiral Sengoku, of course, agrees and tells his sailors to allow Shanks to take the bodies of the two pirates and that any consequence of his decision would be his full responsibility. And we see that Shanks takes these two pirates to Whitebeard's homeland because this was a special place for him and to honor his captain, Marco ended up staying in that place to protect all the people who lived there. Shanks's crew, along with what was left of the Whitebeard pirates, join in the farewell to pay their respects to these two great pirates. And Marco even thanks Shanks for making sure that Whitebeard and Ace got all this respect. Shanks then thinks of Luffy, saying that he would now be dealing with an immense loss. But this couldn't be the reason that would make Luffy give up on his dreams, because one needs to know both victory and defeat to really grow. And it could even be that Shanks ended up asking Rayleigh to guide Luffy so that he wouldn't give up. And so ends the tale of this immensely great and powerful conflict in Marineford in which Shanks was an extremely important person from the very beginning. And even though he couldn't prevent the loss of certain lives, he certainly did prevent more people dying for no reason. And with Shanks playing one of the most important roles in that overall battle, we don't really still know the reason why he decided to do everything and how he accomplished everything in the way that he did. So did he do it all just for Luffy? Or did he do it for a bigger purpose? We'd love to know what you think in the comments below. So as we wrap up this video, I wanna thank you all so much for watching until the very end. Make sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like as you head out to take on the rest of your day. Hope to see you all in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.